It's a true honor to celebrate 45 years of Title IX and to, to just be a product, product of it. All of us are products of Title IX. Um, the people that have forged the path for us, they were brave, they were tough, they were pushing boundaries and they fought so hard for Title IX to be passed and I never forget them. When I put on my shoes and I have the chance to compete as a female athlete, I know that that fight didn't come easy and I'm very thankful and grateful for all the people that came before me. And for the people that are coming after me, you just wanna keep reminding them that the fight isn't over, that we have to continue to push and to, to keep defining the female role and uh, just to keep, keep on keeping on. Um, female athletics is so impressive. The NCAA's uh, participation all over the U.S. Uh, more people are playing volleyball. It's not only a West Coast sport now. You see volleyball in almost every town in America now. So we just have to keep it up and we just can't forget where we came from and we just got to continue the progress and keep fighting for it because um, freedom and uh, pr uh, the opportunity to play, uh, those are privileges and they can be taken away at any time, so we just can't take it for granted. Um, I feel like, you know, we, we've we had a lot at my school for a long time, and so it really is important to look back and remember where everybody came from. Um, women who you know who didn't have anything and who said this is not okay this is not where we're gonna stay and um, and all we can do is look back and say thank you so much because I feel like I had it really easy and I didn't you know I don't I, I kind of don't know what to say because I don't feel like I feel like by the time I came along um, people had blazed a path that I didn't I didn't feel like I necessarily had to fight um, because others had and I'm very very grateful for that um, it's it's hard to almost think that you know I mean we we know we're good we know what we did but um, you know to have to fight to be recognized for that and just to even get equal time we don't want more than anyone else we don't want anything different than anyone else we just want the same and uh, and so many people had to go through an awful lot to get that so I really really appreciate that and I'd like to say thank you so I certainly appreciate Title IX um, I was one of those lucky ones that I was going to go to college no matter if Title IX was around or not not, I wouldn't have probably swum in college. Um, I think though it is so um, important that it opened so many doors for so many women. And um, you know, I agree with Missy. I mean, I, you know, I'm not one of those that wants equal or um, you know, um, depending upon how you define equal. But certainly. These women that, that are accomplishing so much at the top of their sport deserve recognition. And um, so it would be nice to, um, or it's so nice that now there's so much more recognition. I, I, I guess, I do think Title IX is still imperfect. And, um, you know, as the mother of a son, an athlete, um, and just watching how many swimming programs have been cut and other programs have been cut uh, for men's sports, I certainly don't think it's. Uh, perfect now and and I don't know how to make it perfect I'm not educated enough but um, certainly I think sports helps everybody men women and um, you know I I, um, I I think there's still a way to make it better than what it is now and I'm just not sure you know I think a couple male sports skew the equation and uh, I'm not sure how to you know correct that equation to make it so that it really is working um, for everybody. I'm definitely a Title IX recipient. Um, I was born in 1971 uh, and I probably would not be where I am today if it wasn't for what Title IX has done. Um, I think it's provided ample opportunities for female athletes uh, to really have a better future. I mean I think the reality of it all in sports is what we've learned simply by playing the game that we love, whether we are the best in our area, the best in our team, the best in our city, it's really just becoming the best person that we can be. And no better way to do that than simply by playing a sport, learning how to compete, learning how to fail, learning how to succeed, uh, learning how to be aggressive, and all the while still being who you are as a female. And I think that's probably the most important thing. I think at times Title IX does get a bad rap because it is about men versus women, and I think that's not the moral or that's not what Title IX is about. It's just simply providing opportunities uh, that finances are equally distributed so that everybody has an opportunity to succeed and most importantly, to become the best people that they can be. 
Well, <clears throat> exactly, just to follow up that, uh, you know, with the, the sports that we have here and uh, thinking about volleyball and Kathy Gregory and, and Mary Jo Pepler, who, you know, I played against because my sister played and uh, gymnastics being in the 76 Olympics with Nadia Kamenich. Uh, swimming Donna De Verona and being around Mickey King with diving and softball with seeing Joan Joyce play and, and uh, Carol Spanks and all those gals because it, my sister played and I was fortunate enough to be around athletics at a very young age uh, that it was in our family acceptable for young girls to compete because I had an older sister I had a mother and father that supported their six daughters as they did their five sons. And uh, so sports was always important in our lives. And even though Title IX wasn't around, we played because we loved the game. And, uh, and we knew that we were going to go, go to college and get an education, whether we were going to do sports on a scholarship or not. And so I know for myself, when I did receive a scholarship, it was, I was really, no words could express how I felt to have uh, my education paid for doing something that I loved. And, uh, and again, Title IX, as Lisa said, I think it's been skewed because it's about equal, actually it was an education bill for women to get equal pay. And uh, you look at Patsy Banks and, and uh, uh, Sandra Berenson and what they did, women couldn't get an education. They weren't allowed to go to college. And uh, we think how long it's become the calling card for now women in sports. But it's so much more than that. And, uh, and certainly we know that women still are not getting equal pay. But even before Title IX, football and basketball on the men's side, they were the two sports bringing in money. Not, bas not baseball, not tennis, not track and field, would not lacrosse and, and all these other sports on the men's side. None of them brought in money. So, you know, to have the equal opportunity to be able to compete and do something you love, uh, to have Title IX a part of that now, uh, the unfortunate thing, I think a lot of young women today don't understand and know really what Title IX is all about. And uh, so I think there still needs to be education about it. But to have the opportunity to, to compete at such a high level and to get your education taken care of because of something like Title IX, uh, to help women athletes to be able to compete at the highest level and, and to be a part of that has been so wonderful. Uh, and I'm so grateful because I, I see the, the benefits of all, not only all of us, but the, the young athletes that are able to, uh, you know, take advantage of that too. Because you see what the athletes become, whether we're, whether we're wives and mothers, but because of being an athlete, how we can contribute to society, how we can contribute to the community and give back because we know how it's important and, and how hard we had to work and, uh, and sacrifice to get where we want to be. And it wasn't a sacrifice because we all loved it. And we were doing what we wanted to do and we can still continue to do what we want to do because of being athletes. Can I, can I say one more thing too? So, so I, I totally agree that it's, it's helped, you know, women specifically. But I, I was remiss in not saying what it's done for our sport. And, you know, the fact that women can now compete through college, financially be able to afford to compete through college, and then after college, they can, you know, if they're really that good, they can make a living off of being a good swimmer. I mean, that has raised our sport. That has allowed our, the women to really um, push themselves and see how far they can go. And without Title IX, um, you know, with how expensive college is, there's no way that that many women would have been able to have that choice to, to really see what their full potential was. We thought that women swimmers peaked at 15, 16 years old. And now we're realizing, no, we can continue to get to get better and faster well into our 20s. And that's really exciting. And I think a lot of that our society has changed attitude-wise because we have husbands supporting their wives. We have brothers now supporting their sisters. And just the fact that men are having daughters, these fathers are having daughters. And, uh, and even with your sons, to know that it's okay for young girls to compete in sports. But, you know, fathers getting involved with their daughters has been a huge, I think, uh, transition as far as attitudes and change in, our, in uh, our society. It's still a long ways away because when people say, when you hear a father saying, you throw like a girl, I said, yeah, Lisa Fernandez, <laughs> which is great, you know? And, uh, but it, it's just, it, to hear people talk about uh, comparing something negative being female, you know, it, that's still frustrating. And that still has to change as far as that attitude. But it's, again, it's slowly changing.
and, and in the workforce, uh, the data does not lie. We have a long way to go. In, in the sciences, in, in our communities everywhere, the fight isn't over. So as Americans, we represent a lot of the good in the world and, and by taking the initiative to give women more opportunities to compete in sport and compete in other aspects of our lives, hopefully we're gonna set an example for the rest of the world where women don't have very much of a voice in some parts of the world. So we just gotta keep pushing. It's not over. And I think, Annie, you brought up a great point about the education of the athletes of today and what they have to know, what Title IX has provided. But also the collegiate level has created a great platform for future success in our sports. And as you alluded to, you know, back in the day we thought life was over after college. I know for me, I thought my career ended once I graduated from UCLA. And, uh, you know, I feel because of what college and the media and the attention that sports has been able to get, especially women's athletics through college, uh, other opportunities have opened up, you know, for me to be an Olympian. Um, professional leagues. Now we're nowhere near comparable to the men, but that's the fight that we still have to continue. And I think, um, you know, the legacy has to continue with these athletes that are currently in the process going through it, that they have to continue to push and to strive and to get us to a point where there will be one day when a female can make a living simply by doing what she loves to do. And that may be being an athlete, or it could be being a doctor, or it could be being an engineer, uh, excuse me, an engineer, uh, or it could be just being a mom who can now coach your son's team um, but all that comes down to it it's through athletics and and that's basically a part of what title nine has been able to provide us